Hello. Shall we get started for the next panel? OK. So I think uh, we run a few minutes late, because uh, Pooh is interesting, exciting talk. So this panel is uh, it's called uh, the Experience with OpenStack in Telco Infrastructure Transformation. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Haiying Wang. I'm the CTO of uh, Cloud Computing at Huawei. I've been involved in the virtualization and the cloud over 10 years in my early days from since VMware. So we all know that uh, uh, it's pretty clear that IT is going through transformation move to the cloud. And uh, uh, cloud, um, hopefully, will be cloud stand up by OpenStack as a primary platform for the future infrastructure. At the same time, the telco is going through their transformations. And uh, we see them uh, like uh, NFE initiatives and cloud service. It's all uh, exciting. Uh, it's my distinct honor to hold on hosting this powerful panel uh, with the guys who are very much in front of uh, uh, driving these transformations. And um, well, we have opportunity to hear what the telco's um, unique uh, challenges and efforts uh, from these practitioners. So uh, in the panel, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, ask each of these uh, panelists to introduce themselves and the, what they have done in terms of OpenStack. Then we'll ask a few uh, prepared questions. Uh, we leave a few minutes in the end for audience to participate. Uh, so without a whole lot of delay, let's get it started. So um, Hi, thank you guys for being here. And uh, I will let uh, Boris start it, and then you can pass the microphone around. Yep, thank you, Haying. So my name is Boris Rensky. I am a co-founder and chief marketing officer at Marantis. We are the largest pure play OpenStack vendor. Um, and um, my role here, I am unlike some of the other uh, members of the panel here, actually represent the vendor side. We work with uh, a lot of carriers, helping them um, adopt OpenStack for the NFE use case. Um, so I'll probably serve more as a kind of a co-moderator with Haying than a kind of representative of the kind of telco viewpoints. But uh, um, we'll add some flavor of my own as well. Thanks, Boris. Uh, yeah, I'm Toby Ford. I work for at and I'm, I'm responsible for the cloud architecture for both our internal and our external work. And then uh, I've been with at and over the last eight years. I was actually CTO of a company, USI, before that. And then uh, lately we've been working a lot on the idea of NFV and SDN, applying it to the telcos. Look forward to talking about that. Thank you. So my name is Alexis Sasset. I'm chief cloud architect at Vodafone and also uh, product owner of our private cloud platform. So um, I work on the application side of the business. And I always try to bring um, a sort of application view to what we do in, uh, in cloud. So looking forward to uh, explain more of that. And, uh, I'm Fred Oliveira at uh, Verizon. I uh, work in uh, the uh, corporate technology group. Um, worked in various cloud areas. I was acquired into Verizon from a small company called CloudSwitch. I've uh, been working in cloud area for probably eight or nine years, different forms. Um, and I'll look forward to it, explaining some of the uh, work that's going on at Verizon. OK, thank you. And let me start with the first question. So let's first talk about a cloud. So. Uh, I want you, from your experience, uh, why, what force driving you to go to the cloud, and why OpenStack? Uh, what's the uh, experience? What's the uh, challenges for you, um, specifically in, in using OpenStack? Maybe you can start it from Fred. Uh, so I, I, again, what's driven us in this direction is uh, uh, an, an attempt to uh, change from the single box uh, deployments that are um, monolithic deployments that are happening in, in our industry. Uh, all of our vendors tend to give us a uh, single environment uh, that is distinct for every single application. And so our operations group is huge. Uh, we have a uh, no common uh, environment that uh, uh, our operations team can learn. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to move that uh, uh, goalpost a little closer to a common environment. Uh, OpenStack looks like a uh, very good uh, approach to solving that. It's not completely there, but it uh, is a pretty good start. 
All right. Um, on our side, really, what's what's been driving us towards cloud is uh, I, I always resume that to agility. Um, so it's really about making the business a lot more agile. And an example I often give is that not every product is successful, um, and it, we also well, we often saw the, the very strong investment into IT to support an application that will go to waste if if the product is not as successful as we want it. Uh, so this agility brings two things. It's really quick reaction to activities in the market and the quick decision making in terms of, you know, do we keep going with that application and change it quickly or do we just call it quits and do something else? Um, so that's really the power of cloud. What we like with OpenStack is really, um, it's becoming the de facto API um, and that's really what's driving us towards OpenStack. It's we hope it's going to be the standardization across all areas of telcos. Yeah, so I think the thing driving at and is additive to what Fred and, as it, and others have said, Alex have already said, <laughs> is uh, certainly full asset utilization and consolidation, you know, typical path for virtualization. Also, uh, giving the users real-time experience, right? So you're... Uh, our customers are wanting to get access to the functionality we can provide right now. They don't want to wait. Uh, and that's a, a change for the telcos is there's a lot of operational and uh, user experience that's been quite slow. So switching to, to real time is important that way. Um, I think in terms of OpenStack, we've been using it for quite a while, uh, for about four years for a lot of internal applications, but you know, it's been as, as described, it's good for standardization. And I think also, as you see lately, the uh, broad set of functionality that's showing up in all the um, adjacent projects, the projects that are growing out of it, some of them are very targeted toward our, our needs. So uh, things like Congress for policy and uh, some of the, the messaging and workflow tools, those, those are really target systems that we have to build. So that's that ecosystem, that federated and uh, sort of integrated ecosystem is quite quite helpful and uh, for us. Uh, some of the challenges we've had, obviously, with, with OpenStack have been the life cycle of working with upgrades and migrations and uh, uh, just keeping up with, uh, with all of the great innovation that's happened, but trying to be on the more recent versions. And that's trying to pivot toward more of a CI, CD model has been really hard for us. Uh, within our ops team, so. And then, uh, obviously, performance through the network is a big area for net, uh, for telcos. Trying to make uh, an x86 perform at the kind of uh, packets per second that we're looking for for our our applications is going to be tricky. So that's those are some areas that way. <laughs> Well, like I said, we are not a telco, we are a vendor. So um, I can add some things from kind of vendor perspective. Um, so there's, there's a variety of use cases for OpenStack in uh, carrier and telco space. And I think that uh, um, what uh, um, most of the, uh, um, of the colleagues to my left have uh, been talking about agility, um, combining different silos into a uniform environment. They, uh, to a large extent, pertain uh, to the uh, um, um, kind of a, um, the uh, internal private cloud use case. But uh, the use case that uh, we've we've tackled quite a bit is uh, actually using OpenStack um, as a, a virtual infrastructure manager for NFV, and I think that is uh, um, kind of a probably more interesting and uh, unique to carriers use case for OpenStack than using it in the same fashion that enterprises uses it for enhanced agility. So um, in, in moving the conversation in that direction, I was wondering um, how many people in the audience um, are familiar with uh, just kind of, you know, NFV movement in, in carrier telco space by show of hands if you know what it is. Okay, so good, 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 good amount of people. Um, so the the one comment I want to say, and I think that probably Toby and some of the uh, um, um, fellow panelists can add a lot because they are kind of you know the uh, driving force behind making OpenStack the uh, um, the uh, the de facto kind of vim fabric for NFV. 
Um, I think that uh, what makes OpenStack unique is uh, um, the fact that it has emerged as a, um, um, on one hand, open, on the other hand, uh, pervasive um, API standard for managing virtualized infrastructure. And uh, historically, um, based on kind of the customers that we've worked with, um, the uh, concept of a virtual infrastructure manager is not something new. Um, they existed for a while, and uh, they've existed in, in various forms and various implementations. But now, as uh, the uh, um, Telco uh, space is really moving, um, proactively moving away from buying uh, expensive boxes and adopting commodity gear and uh, um, running uh, VIMs on top of, uh, of uh, commodity gear. Um, the, at the same time, OpenStack has uh, kind of gained its prominence and uh, these two trends have converged um, and uh, OpenStack has become kind of uh, um, this uh, um, unique fabric that, that can be used for uh, managing um, uh, various virtualized um, network functions. Um, and uh, um, right now there is a trend that uh, all of the kind of, uh, you know, um, existing VIMs that, that have been around um, are being, you know, largely replaced by, by OpenStack. And uh, we work with uh, some of the um, large telcos as well as large vendors that uh, have their own kind of flavors of virtual infrastructure manager that they have evolved over the years that are um, now embracing OpenStack as uh, kind of the de facto standard for that and are also augmenting it and contributing a lot back to the OpenStack community to make it even a better fabric for that. Okay, uh, that's great. I think it's a good segue for the next question. NFA and OpenStack. And uh, I think uh, this is very hard, especially in this conference. And I think uh, last, last conference, and Toby have a keynote about this. Uh, uh, so I think... Uh, 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 a year ago, I have, a, I have one. It was initially sort of, a, uh, both are in addressing the same problem, but a sort of in a very different directions. Right? One is a top down, one is a bottom up. Uh, OpenStack side is keep putting new features, and the and telco side uh, putting more wishes there. And as we go, I think uh, lots of practi practitioners involved, uh, lots of project, and uh, while in the case we work with many of those vendors, uh, to on the POCs, and on the same time, to uh, OpenStack as a whole, also put this in high priority. And we see some a special. We have wiki page about all NFV. We have a special group in Neutron for NFV. And we have lots of functions in NFV. So I, what I want to ask uh, the panelists is that uh, so maybe you can give your definition of NFV. What do you think the challenges? choose OpenStack as an implementation platform, and uh, uh, how you think this two can be converged uh, to, uh, uh, since there's lots of people here, some from IT, from, from Telco, will be good to, um, and uh, Boris and I are more on the vendor side, the other three is the user side, so we want to get this conversation go to see um, what you, you, you guys thought. So I'll probably hand off to Toby because Toby is a, a fellow um, OpenStack board member that's been very vocal in uh, driving OpenStack in the direction of uh, specifically making it usable for the NFV use case um, and probably knows more about that than uh, um, most people around. Sure. So just uh, some of the things with NFV. You know, clearly there are systems that were were once in vertically integrated hardware, uh, bringing them out into uh, into virtualized in VMs or in containers, that's a challenge. So that's the first step is is taking uh, the software out and making it work on on a Linux uh, box or you know that hasn't always worked. So that's sort of the first step, and it's very similar to enterprise space where taking uh, the legacy backend systems and and converting them over to more of a web app database uh, model and more of a distributed database, NoSQL, making it go from more of a pets to a cattle model. We're having to do the same thing with the NFV kind of, or VNFs, the virtual network functions, uh, convince the vendors to, to think more in the scale out model and uh, move more toward what I think of as midget cattle. Uh, because when you're, 
when you always thought of vertically integrated boxes, you just make them bigger, uh, have, add more uh, processors, more memory, more throughput through, uh, through the boxes. And then if, if you think of it more as midget cattle, then uh, you, know, you can build out, much like uh, Google or, or the big web companies have, very scalable and resilient environments with uh, a much cheaper approach, a much more uh, kind of um, you know swarmish approach to the problem. So getting the the vendors around the the VNFs to switch to this is has been key, and it's you know we're attacking it both ways, going at the incumbent vendors to try to get them to change, but also promoting the startups uh, that are targeting this this spot and you know things like it's actually been around quite a while if you look at uh, what uh, let's say viata has been able to do with routers uh, for C ce's and pe's within an mpls scheme they've already had good penetration there for especially globally uh, if you needed to have a cheap uh, uh, ce or customer edge product they were already there uh, same goes for load balancing and firewalls. They've already kind of made the switch to being virtual. Uh, now it's a question of the the larger mobility kind of systems switching. So, um, so I, I perhaps have a little bit of a different view on on NFE than, than most of uh, the other telco people, as I come from the application side of business. Um, what I find really interesting with NFV is the uh, the dynamic aspect of workloads that, that we are seeing happening, as as more and more services are moving towards IP, uh, we are seeing more and more bandwidth requirements, latency requirements with the evolution of the network, and and I always ask myself the question: Well, how is the application of tomorrow going to look, and how are we going to get this very elastic and instant access to resources all across the, uh, the telco space. Uh, so NFV really answers that question in combination with OpenStack because um, we could potentially move an application from a, a data center uh, to a core area and even to the edge when, when it needs to, to happen. Uh, so that's quite interesting. The challenge that I perceive in terms of OpenStack, which perhaps is not directly an OpenStack challenge, but is the ability to run this kind of new workloads without affecting the uh, the critical workloads that we would have. So emergency services call, these kind of things, you want them to work even if you have other workloads running on the same platform. Uh, so that that's where I feel the, the architecture work around OpenStack is, is really going to pay off and, and give answers, which actually will also benefit IT, so quite a good space. I mean, I don't have too much more to add to what Toby says. Uh, I think we have the, you know, the problem that we've seen in, kind of in our vendors is that exactly what Toby said, that there's a lot of uh, kind of extraction of what they build in the uh, hardware environments today and trying to run that just in, in a virtualized way, that doesn't allow for the uh, uh, dynamic uh, scalability or uh, reconfigurability that you really need in this environment. Um, so I think that'll be a challenge for our vendors. And uh, I think enabling or uh, promoting some of the startups is probably a way to um, uh, move that along and uh, get that in a um, uh, more consumable fashion for uh, us as a uh, consumer. From a kind of Ability of OpenStack, I think the a lot of the capabilities are there or almost there in the uh, existing uh, OpenStack environments. Uh, NFV is getting pushed in, thank you, Joe, uh, pretty well. Uh, so I, I think there's lots of uh, capabilities. The the notion that uh, uh, being able to describe an application uh, as a through an NFV, NFVD or uh, VNFD. Uh, is a, a, a useful approach that uh, you can abstract uh, the needs and resources uh, into a uh, consumable fashion for uh, an infrastructure and deploy that in a, a common way it will be a, a enabler for our environment. Okay, and do you guys have anything to add? I think uh, um, uh, I think the uh, the OpenStack side, I can see two things that are interesting. Uh, first, the OpenStack itself is sort of a moving target. We're getting more new features uh, uh, because we're driven by engineers. So they always want to add new things, more fancy things, keep changing. Uh, that's good uh, as innovation. But uh, from 
consumer side, do you consume this technology? Uh, do you wish to be uh, uh, in the form that uh, some part is uh, stable so it can keep going, or, or you want just open-ended to just keep going? So that's saying we have lots of customers asking, saying, uh, um, can, we, can you say it's something that's going to be production ready? I mean, what he really means is that maybe two years you don't upgrade this stuff or can keep using it. So this is the one thing. Another is that uh, as a whole to address NFE issues, uh, right now OpenStack is more modular driven, right? There's no coordinated effort, and then we have two board members here. So I'm trying to use this opportunity to say uh, there's another organization called OPNFE that's all more practical. So from, uh, is there anything you guys wish that it would be more systematically instead of uh, uh, we just let it happen? So I'm just through the question there, and you guys can pick it up. Well, my perspective, I think a lot of the things we need is uh, a lot more of the integration between uh, capabilities of service assurance, getting monitoring capabilities that can feed back into the control capabilities, kind of getting the right models and uh, behavior out of, you know, Solometer or other approaches to that, uh, feeding back into uh, orchestration framework that uh, we can both uh, understand what's going on in the environment uh, and use that to uh, uh, feed back into how do we run it. Um, perhaps one point from my side, which I addressed in Hong Kong together with uh, Haying as well, um, is, is really how are the APIs moving forward and in ensuring that um, any changes to the API um, will not break any software that we run on top. So it's a pretty basic statement, but I, I think it's always good to remind ourselves that uh, telco applications may not move as fast as, as IT, and, and so they, they have a heavy reliance on whatever they use yeah. under it. Yeah, the thing I'd add to that is uh, I'm really supportive of the testing work that we do with uh, Tempest and uh, um, building automated test suites for each of the, the different projects. And uh, trying to come up with like uh, what, what uh, Boris and Morantes have done with the vendor compatibility, that's very important. Um, trying to continually improve the the way we we test, refactoring the kind of core and getting at the issue we were just describing of of always uh, extending iteratively uh, functionality. You have to kind of refactor and come back to okay, is the base part solid and uh, does it continually uh, meet the expectations that we set? And so that's that's what I think is great about OpenStack is it provides an example for other open source projects of how you can build out a very comprehensive test suite to uh, to, to validate improvements and such. So I think that's that's an example of helping some of that problem. Yeah, thank you. So I think that uh, um, so the question, if I'm understanding correctly. Uh, um, OpenStack is fluid, it's moving fast, and things change. How do you um, um, kind of uh, um, cohabitate this fast change with the uh, um, SLAs and predictability that the uh, consumers of OpenStack in the telco space need? So if that's the question, my, my answer is, is as follows. I think that uh, um, it's important to understand that OpenStack is open source community. And as such, um, everything that's happening in OpenStack upstream is really a kind of a development sandbox environment. This is not exclusive to OpenStack. This is it's typical of any open source project. So if you want to take um, the upstream OpenStack um, and make it usable, you have to spend some effort to make it work. And there is a couple of ways that you can do it. You can either work with some vendor that ships a downstream distribution, either specifically um, hardened for the telco needs or the enterprise needs or whatever your end user need is, or uh, you basically have to roll your own distro um, and the common way to do it is through, you know, the, the very sexy notion of, you know, uh, doing CI/CD and running the trunk. 
So some, first of all, like, you know, nobody, nobody ever runs really the trunk. What people do do is they absorb some of the patches that are merged upstream, and then they have their own sophisticated system for testing, validating, fixing, and then merging it into the production environments, which is effectively what, you know, vendors like Mirantis or Red Hat or um, Canonical do uh, when, when they roll their downstream distribution of OpenStack. And uh, I believe that uh, the choice between either going with a vendor or doing it yourself is uh, driven by whether or not uh, you know it's very important for you to stay completely independent or um, you want to kind of you know be quicker out of the gate but uh, um, you know I, I think that this this lack of predictability in the upstream environment and the fast moving pace of development is not something that is ever going to change uh, with OpenStack or with any open source software and it's important to understand that Great. Uh, so um, let me go to the uh, last prepared question. I think uh, OpenStack is different than any other things, at least uh, from a Huawei perspective as a closed source company, is this uh, open development model. And really, the users, uh, developers, all in a one community to push. So uh, for us, it's a pretty sh uh, um, dramatic for us, because we always no customer what they want, and then we do the future and deliver. I hope they can use a couple of years, and then we do. But now everything um, uh, is transparent, that's good, and sometimes you don't have control what's going on. So I want to hear, uh, especially from the operator perspective, is this open development model, uh, what, why is this thing, how important is it for you as an organization to solve these technologies? Uh, uh, what's your thought and uh, if anything you wish to change or anything you uh, change yourself then it will be shared with the rest of the audience, it will be interesting. So I want to hear from you guys, open development model, how important it is, is this going to be future, that's the way it is, or it's going to be uh, for time being to break through the new technology after stable will back to the old style. And then kind of to piggyback on that question that kind of I want to add a related question is uh, the question is about the degree of penetration of uh, commodity gear in telco space today. So we talk about NFV and open software orchestrating on top of commodity gear. Is this the far out kind of in the future thing that maybe will happen? Or is there a significant chunk of infrastructure um, in telco space already today being run on commodity gear uh, with fabrics like OpenStack being used as virtual infrastructure manager? Sure. All right. So two questions. Uh, let me try to remember both. Uh, uh, so the first one about the open source and development model, I think it's essential for, for right now. I mean, if you look at the trend over the last 20, 30 years, w whatever function it was, uh, I think, my, in my experience, compilers used to cost $20,000. Uh, buying a compiler today, that doesn't happen. Uh, it's done with open source, and it evolves very in a very interesting ways, like LLVM and such, right? You do that with OSs, with databases, with web servers, same things happened. It's essentially when it's non-differentiated function and everybody knows how to make it and everybody wants the same thing, then open source has proven to be a very good model for working that way. I think it actually represents a better way to create standardization than standards committees. And this is one of the real reasons why we've been so supportive of OPNFV is we, we're trying to actually create something that's a merger of the good parts of, let's, let's say, Etsy and the, the good parts of OpenStack. Uh, have developers working on practical, uh, deployable thing, uh, have it be well tested and integrated in something that we can deploy and work on actual code uh, and iterate on it instead of waiting for committees to decide and, and voting on it. It's more like a practical sort of feedback loop. So that, that we just, I think, also I'm hopeful that we get all the other telcos to work with us this way. The telco space is enormous uh, worldwide. The revenues of telcos are in the trillions of dollars. If we could just apply our wasted bodies uh, in that space, to this, this problem, we'd actually solve quite a lot of problems. And really, we have to accept that there isn't a lot more differentiated function in this realm. Uh, it's just not the case. 
when there's a hundred vend hundred telcos wanting the same functions, it's it's not that way. So open is the right way to go, and we're trying to drive that way and try to be as independent as possible as well. You know, we've spent so much time being dependent on one vendor or two vendors, and then that's led us only down into a dead end. We want it to be more independent and open this way. Okay, so that's question one. The second part of the second part of it is uh, about the hardware, commodity hardware. I mean, not a lot of what we do today is on commodity hardware. Um, it's still, even when we use x86 hardware, it's it's brand name. It's uh, uh, done with uh, four-hour SLAs. We pay a lot for maintenance. It's still not really the benefit that we see in the future with commodity hardware. Um, that's coming, and that's clearly where we want to drive. But we're also, like Fred was saying earlier, uh, we're not going to get the economies of scale going the way we've been doing it before, where each service we have is a siloed infrastructure. We have to pool it together and start buying in chunks of not 1,000 x86 servers, but tens of 50 to 100,000 a quarter, uh, like some of our competitors that, that way. So. All right, we have very good answers. I can't add much more, so um, really, I think I reiterate, open source um, is a great way to drive standardization. And I, I think OpenStack is, is doing great in, the, in that space, and that's why it makes so much more sense. We avoid vendor locking. We can still create relationships with specific vendors to have the stability. Um, but we can also ensure that through the open source aspect of it, uh, we have a standard that works across all vendors. And a non-commodity, uh, I find the, the answer interesting. So I, I do feel we are, in a way, commoditized on x86. There, there are still brand names and SLAs attached to it. Um, but I think we've already done the first step of, of virtualizing a lot of the IT, and that's coming to the NFV as well. Uh, so in a way, it's, it's commoditized at the hypervisor layer, uh, which should drill down to, um, to whatever is underneath later. Uh, I can't add much more about that. I agree very much with the uh, the standardization aspects of the open source uh, uh, path, and the, uh, I think it'll enable uh, a lot more uh, commoditization, if not, uh, and capabilities through, through that. Um, so I think, and we, as Verizon, intend to support that, and uh, we'll probably uh, try to contribute back into the open source environment uh, for whatever special functions we think we need. We'll try to drive that back into the community. Um, on the commodity hardware, again, I don't, there isn't much today, uh, although uh, I can see very quickly that we are moving in that direction. Uh, and it, it won't be long before a large part of our environment is on commodity environment, uh, both hardware and software environments. Okay, uh, so I guess we're going to change all the standard community to open source community from now on with the push of the windows. Okay, we're coming to the end, so I, I'll just ask if anyone have a question. There's a two mic here. Um, if not, let's give a round of applause to the panelists. And thank you guys for here. Right. Thank you.